Hello everyone, I'm Becky Goldsmith from Piece of Cake Designs and I want to introduce you to these essential self-adhesive laminating sheets. Linda and I have used this kind of product for many years to make our applique templates. This is better. This new product is slightly more rigid which makes a much better applique template. The packaging includes directions on how to use uh, the laminating sheets and I'm going to show you what the instructions tell you. So I'm going to set that aside and take one of the laminating sheets. The templates I'm going to make are from my book, The Quilter's Practical Guide to Color, from the Tile Tango Quilt. So what you do to use the laminating sheets to make your templates is once you have your pattern you're going to need to make at least one copy of it. So you will cover that copy with the self-adhesive laminating sheet and that will make the paper rigid enough to use as a template. This is much faster than tracing the pattern onto some other template material. It's more accurate because a copier is, is um, a copier makes a more accurate representation of the pattern than you ever will by tracing. And this is a product that's very easy to cut out so it doesn't make your hands hurt as you cut out your templates. Now if you look closely at this pattern you'll notice that say this small leaf number one is connected by dashed dots underneath the stem. So that whole thing is the number one shape. And the same thing is true of the number two leaf. That whole leaf couplet is one template. To use the copy to make the templates for these two shapes, I'll be cutting through that number three stem. That's why for this pattern I made two copies of the pattern because out of the second copy I'm going to take that number three shape. And that's going to be true on other shapes that might overlap in any pattern that you make. So let me get my patterns out and I will rejoin you. I'm back. I used my paper scissors and cut the number three stem out of my second copy and you'll notice I left a buffer of paper around it. At this point there's no reason to cut any shape out exactly as it is drawn. You'll do that once it's been stuck to the laminate. Let me set that aside for just a minute. Now you use your templates in needle turn hand applique right side up on top of the right side of the fabric. When I put the laminate on top of the paper, I am going to want it to be on top of the paper because the laminate is shiny and slick and I want that on the top of my template. I want the, the more matte paper side of the template next to the fabric. There are times where a pattern might indicate that you will be using your templates upside down. In that case, you would put the laminate on the blank side of the paper. But almost always, I'm putting the laminate on the um, drawn side of the paper. In the templates that I make for needle turn hand applique, there is no seam allowance added. So what you see is what you get. Now I could cover this entire sheet with the um, self-adhesive laminate. But that's a little bit wasteful because this part of the paper is just going to go in the trash. Anything here that isn't a template is going to be thrown away. So I'm going to, before I even start, just trim away a little bit of that excess paper. And again, I'm not going to take the time to cut these shapes out exactly. I'm just trimming away some of the trash. Let me set that aside. What I like to do is work with the laminate peeled 
and flat on the table with the sticky side up. I have a lot more luck sticking the paper right side down onto the laminate than the reverse way. So what I'm going to do now is set my paper aside and take the laminate and I want to find a corner and I'm going to bend just about an eighth of an inch of the corner back toward the backing sheet. I might roll it in my hand just a little bit. I might work it back and forth until the laminate and the backing sheet separate. You'll be tempted to take this and peel it off up in the air and then lay the sheet down, but don't do that because as you pull more of the backing sheet off, when you get down to the bottom, when the backing sheet releases, it can sometimes cause the laminate to kick back on itself. And once it sticks to itself, it's over. So I'm going to lay this flat and carefully peel the backing sheet away. I'm going to set that down. I very often stand up to stick the um, paper to the laminate, and you'll be tempted to place the paper flat and stick it flat to the laminate. That's not usually a good idea because sometimes there's static electricity and it will grab the paper in different areas and cause it to wrinkle. I think it's much better to cup the paper in the center and again I'm putting the side of the paper with the lines right side down on the laminate because I want to use my templates right side up. So I'm going to hold it, cup the paper in my hand, and with control, set the paper down and control it as it falls farther down. Now remember, I also have the stem that I want to stick on here. And I think I can do that right there, just like that. Now, if I had missed the mark, if I had gotten this paper and part of it stuck out over on this side of the laminate and wasn't covered. That's not the end of the world. If that ever happens to you, just cover the exposed part with a little more excess laminate. And I'll show you in a minute when you might do that because you wouldn't want to do it with all this sticky stuff hanging out. That's going to be in your way. So. When you find yourself working with a sheet with all of this exposed laminate, to keep that from being in your way, take the backing sheet and place it back over the exposed sticky edges. And then I turn it over so that I can see what I'm doing. And I trim away the excess laminate. And this is a really nice usable sheet of laminate. I have a drawer where I keep pieces that are usable sized to make templates on other projects. So that's going to go in my drawer. Now you'll notice that the backing sheet is going to want to curl and fall away. But before I let it fall completely off, I'm going to cut some more of that excess laminate off. Because what that's doing is keeping any of the sticky laminate, the gummy part of the adhesive, from getting on my scissor blades. So as long as it's easy, I generally trim away the excess laminate, either with the backing sheet stuck to it, or I will trim where I've got paper stuck to the laminate and not just on raw open laminate. Now, if I had managed to put this paper on the laminate and not gotten the entire thing covered, let's imagine that my laminate ended right here. Well, I have more laminate that I cut away or I've got more sheets. You can always take another bit of laminate and peel the backing sheet off and cover any part of the template you might have missed. When you do that, go ahead and let the laminate uh, pages overlap each other. It would be very difficult to butt them up next to each other and it doesn't work particularly well. It's better if you overlap the shapes. 
You would use that same idea if you ever need to make a very large template, one that's bigger than a piece of paper. In that case, you'd make two copies, you'd tape the copies together, and then put laminate, it, uh, overlap laminate on top of those taped together copies until you've covered whatever enormous template you needed to make. Last but not least, when you are cutting your templates out, no, I really did want to zoom in here. What you want to do is split the line, always. Use your very best paper scissors and cut right down the center of the drawn line. Now here, rather than taking my scissor in right to the edge of this rounded number 13 and turning it to cut, I'm going to back my scissor up just a little bit and come around to this smoother edge of 13 and I'm going to cut here. I would, I, this is the way I treat most flower centers. I cut the center out first and then I cut the petals and that helps to keep the edges of the flower center smooth um, and it makes it easier to cut the petals. Now right here, I've got a little too much paper uh, template material hanging off the edge. I'm just going to come back and cut that off so that I'm working with something smaller in my hand. Now, what you'll notice when you make templates this way is that they're faster to make, they're accurate. I can tell you, I promise you, that these templates are plenty rigid enough to trace against many, many times. So you can use these for multiple blocks. The other thing is, and it's a subtle distinction, but if you're used to working with template plastic, you know that template plastic is thick. And when you are tracing next to a, a template made of that thicker plastic, the height of the template tends to push the edge of the chalk pencil just a little bit away from the edge of the template. So you're not getting as accurately drawn a line. These templates are very flat and they're smooth on top. So not only can you take your pencil and trace right next to the edge of the template, but the, the pencil, especially chalk, tends to glide more smoothly across the top edge of the template. So these are fast and accurate and um, they work exceptionally well. I hope that you find this helpful and I know that you will enjoy using the essential self-adhesive laminating sheets. May you have many happy stitches. Thank you for watching.